Hi, I'm Alison from Not Another Mummy blog and I'm here today to talk to you about all things IVF. So I'm currently 32 weeks pregnant um, with an IVF pregnancy. So I'm here today to talk to you about all the different stages of IVF, how it all works and some of the things that I wish I'd known about before I went through IVF. So what is IVF? In a nutshell, it's when fertilisation takes place outside the womb. IVF stands for in vitro fertilisation and in vitro literally means in glass, which means that the fertilisation takes place in a glass petri dish. Usually IVF is used by couples who have trouble conceiving naturally. So can you have IVF on the NHS? The good news is that for many women in the UK, they can have free IVF treatment on the NHS. And the criteria is, if you're under 40 and you've been trying for more than two years to conceive, then you should be offered up to three rounds of IVF. But don't worry, if you're between 40 and 42 and you've been unsuccessful for over two years, you should be offered one round of IVF. Finally, if tests show that you're unlikely to conceive naturally at all, it's very likely that you will be offered at least one round of IVF. But do bear in mind that depending on where you live, other factors come into play. Things like if you're overweight, if you smoke, if you already have children. And as with many NHS treatments, there can be a long waiting list. So if you do go for private treatment, you're probably looking between 5,000 and 10,000 pounds, depending on which clinic you go to. So here are some things you might want to think about before you start the IVF process. Be aware that there will be loads of appointments to fit into your diary. It really will dominate things for probably about six weeks. So just make sure that you haven't got any big holidays booked or that you're actually able to take a bit of time off work because you might find that every couple of days you're having to go to hospital for scans and appointments. Unfortunately, the IVF process does involve a lot of needles. So if that's something you're not very keen on, then do weigh up whether it's something that you want to go through. If you've decided that you're gonna go for it, this is the process that you'll probably go through. To begin with, you go through a process called downregulation. This will vary from most people and it will depend on what part of your cycle you're on. But in a nutshell, you're given drugs which shuts down your actual natural period and your natural cycle. So now that your natural hormones have been turned off, it's time to stimulate your ovaries. You'll start daily injections for about 10 to 12 days, sometimes longer. So what the doctors are trying to do here are supercharge your ovaries to release as many eggs as possible, which will increase the chances of getting a really good embryo. Once you get the nod from your doctor, you will then have another injection which will release the eggs. Around 36 hours after that, you'll have to go into your clinic for the egg collection. It varies depending on clinics, but sometimes you will be sedated for this, sometimes you won't, um, and your partner will be asked to give a sperm donation at the same appointment. The way it works is that a long, thin tube is attached to an ultrasound probe, and it's inserted inside you, and the eggs are removed. You might only get one or two eggs, you might get up to 15 to 20 eggs. It really depends on how many your ovaries have produced. So this is the fertilization bit, and this is the bit where all you can do is sit at home and cross your fingers. The eggs get put into Petri dishes with this sperm, and nature takes its course. Do bear in mind that not all eggs will be fertilized. Doctors say that about 60 to 70% usually are successfully fertilized. So while the embryologists are doing their thing, you'll be at home doing your thing, which basically means taking progesterone to thicken the lining of your womb. You usually take progesterone either with injections, gels or a pessary, and it's not as scary as it sounds, especially after all the injecting you've been doing, it's really easy. So after a few days, the embryologist should have a really good idea how many embryos they've got, what the quality is and how many you want to have transferred back inside. So you'll go back into your clinic and have the embryo transfer procedure, which will be done usually when you're fully awake and you have to cross your fingers that one of them will implant. If you've been lucky enough to get a few good quality embryos, you will have the option to have them frozen, which means that if this round is unsuccessful, then you can have a much faster, quicker and easier IVF round in future. This next bit, some people say is the hardest. It's called a two week wait. And you're sent home with very strict instructions, no sex, no alcohol, no smoking. But the main thing you can do is put your feet up and rest. It can be a really frustrating time because you go from having lots of appointments and being really busy and doing lots of active things for this process 
to basically doing nothing and just letting nature take its course. Try not to test too early. It's really important that you wait for the full two weeks before doing a pregnancy test because testing early can give you a false result. If you're lucky enough that it's been successful, you'll probably go back to your clinic for one last scan just to make sure that it's implanted in the right place and that everything's looking fine. And then you'll be handed over to your regular midwife and it's a standard pregnancy. So how successful is IVF usually? Very depressingly, the younger you are, the more successful it will be, and the older you are, the success rates plummet drastically. Unfortunately, your chances of success do decrease with each round you do. So if you've had three or four unsuccessful rounds, it might be worth asking yourself if it's worth carrying on and doing more. So are there any risks with IVF? It's a very safe process that's carried out all the time all over the world successfully, but understandably there are some risks. Some of those risks are you're more likely to have a twin pregnancy. This is because many women choose to have more than one embryo put back into their womb, which means that there's more chance of more than one of them implanting and turning into a baby. There's also a much higher chance of ectopic pregnancy, which is why they're keen to scan you early on, just to make sure that the embryo has been planted in the right place. There's also a very rare chance that you might get ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, where all the drugs that you're taking overstimulate your ovaries and it can make you very sick indeed. So if you have any shortness of breath or sickness or really bad headaches, then go and see your doctor immediately. So hopefully this has been useful to you if you're thinking about going through IVF yourself. If you've got any comments or questions, then ask them below. And if you have been through it yourself and you've got anything that you want to add, then please do get involved in the conversation. Thank you so much for watching. Please click on the big M if you want to subscribe and like this video if you found it helpful. And you can come over to my blog at notanothermummyblog.com to see more from me. 